What's going on? It's Michael here. So, you think you're some sort of slick VJ tech hip person, do you? Well, today we're going to take a look at manipulating jet.gl.gridshape objects with some audio, a little bit of fun going on here. There's not really that much happening. To give an example, this is what we're looking at here. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. You feeling it? Mm. I feel like I'm in the club. Uh, that's enough of that. So, what are we going to be doing today? So, in a new max patch, we're going to start off as we always do with a toggle and a metro. And then I'm going to go straight in and set up a toggle bang erase and plug this into a jet.gl.render and I'm going to create a window called render. Now the reason we have the toggle and the bang, or the bang and the erase I should say, is it means that jet.gl render will keep updating as we go. So we can get that out of the way. And what we're also going to do is we're going to set up a fancy full screen window and we're going to do this by key cell 27 so what max is going to do is going to listen for a key and key 27 just so happens to be escape i'm going to pass that toggle into a message called full screen dollar one and we're going to pass that into a jet.window called render. So now we have our little pop-up. If I connect it, it goes full screen. So we can drag that out of the way just now. So why we actually came here today? We are having a quick look at geometry and ways to manipulate that using audio. It's a very basic patch, but hopefully it gives you ideas of where to get started and how to start using your own objects inside. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a jet.gl.gridshape in render. And I'm going to make a cube. And what I'm also going to attach to this is jet.gl.handle which allows us to use the mouse inside our window to control any shapes we have there. So if I turn on toggle, I'm going to hold alt and drag away and suddenly we've got our cube inside our shape. Fantastic. What we can also do is we can bring this attribute so we have a track tone and we can change it to any shape we want as we go through. But I'm a big fan of the cube. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to play about with putting textures onto this cube. So we're going to create a jet.gl.texture. I'm going to name it cmap so I don't need to worry about cables everywhere. And all we do is we tell our new cube that it's got a texture coming from cmap. If I scroll out you'll see that not much has changed but that's because not much has changed in texture. If I get really creative with my red ball into texture, there we go. It's because I have another max window open with the same uh, user file names. Doing it correctly, when I've named my texture CMAP2, and this is receiving texture CMAP2, I can now play files straight onto it. And suddenly, we've got a really wicked cube. It looks a bit washed out. And that's purely because our cube is grey and it's play placing a white video on top of it. We can start playing about with colour. So if we pass in something like a swatch with a pre-pen colour, 
suddenly we can start making some really crazy things happen with our video. And there, within simply a few minutes, we've created a shape, looked at how to apply textures to it, and done live video. Which is some really cool things if you, you do things like visualizations, getting live video and just wrapping on a 3D object instantly makes it much cooler. I think we can all agree. But what happens if there's more to life than just playing with red ball in a cube? What happens if we want to get really creative with our things like audio? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in an SF play. Or if you're feeling really creative, you can do something like a wire straight from the ADC. So this would pick up straight from your microphone that you've got built in, but it's now 20 past midnight, so I'm not going to be blaring any music through my speakers, so I'll have to do it the old fashioned way. But we in SF play an open message. Now let's pick a music file. Then all we need is a toggle to confirm it. I'm going to add a resume and a pause button so we can stop it when we want. And then we're going to add this live gain. It's just a really nice way of visualizing our audio. I'm also going to turn this SF play and add a two at the end there so we have two audio channels coming out of it so we can have stereo files. So now if we add an easy DAC to the end of it, connect it up, turn it on and push resume. Always open then turn on your toggle. So I have music playing. Great. Now what? That's just sound. Max is great at reading the data values that sound has. If we try to connect these audio files to an integer, it doesn't work because it's still a signal. But if we use something called a meter, we can turn audio files into float values. I think you can see where this is going. So now I know I've got a value coming up with my audio player. We can start using. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add something called a peak amp. And what this does is it'll tell me what the highest amplitude it's recorded in a certain amount of time. Now I'm going to do 50 milliseconds. And then I'm going to compare that with the value it's currently reading. And say if my current value is greater than the average peak value within the past half a second and send a bang. What that's going to do for us is it's going to have a sort of limiting effect so that it only happens on beats rather than it constantly just sending messages. We put that into a bang just to visualize it and I'm going to send a message that says send bang if peak. So S stands for send and then we can send whatever variable we want to. So if I resume that, you'll see that it bangs only when the audio is peaking. Now what sort of wicked things can we do with this? Now it's all fun being able to manipulate our cube with our mouse, but what happens if the program does it for us? If we add an object called jit.anim dot drive, which animates 3D transformation, we can control exactly that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send anim drive a message called turn. So prepend turn means that I'll add turn to the front of whatever I send it. And I'm going to send it three values. It works in float and in integers. So now if I start sending values to turn, our cube's going to start animating. And I'm a fan of not doing any work, so I'm going to randomize a thousand and then divide it by a hundred. And for the sake of this, I'm going to keep it a float because that's the sort of value I want. 
With this, though, that's going to randomize a number between 0 and 1,000. But rotate can also go negative. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to minus 500 for my total. So that now I have a number between minus 500 and 500 total. So now, if I send random a bang, it starts to rotate in weird ways. And jit.anim.drive with the turn message has a really nice sort of linear motion to it so it's not instantly snapping between. It will decelerate and then accelerate in the new direction. Now if only we had a bang coming from somewhere every so often. Which is what we do. So I'm going to receive the message bang if peak. I'm going to plug that into my random. Duplicate this three times. So now that means every time that our music sends a bang, our cube will animate in a strange way of strange speed. I really think we should do something with this lime green color we've got as well, with the option to play about with the really cool settings on the on the cube here, especially when we've got a white background on our actual input video. So we already have our swatch set up here. But if you were to send it random numbers like we did up here, it has a real problem where saturation gets affected and you end up with a lot of murky greys as your colour, which nobody wants. So what we can do is we can set it up to work on a path. And Swatch has one already set up. If we look at this here, you'll see that it's already set up to drive along this dead centre line that's got lots of beautiful crisp colours. So we're going to do that. We're just going to take it, paste that right in here. So now we have a cube that goes to some pretty extreme colors. All we need to do is animate this single button here. But I want to keep the smooth rotation that uh, Drive has. So we're going to write an extra little code using a line command. So I'm going to bring in my receive bang if peak. Generate my random number between 0 and 255. And then I'm going to divide it by 255 so that I get a float. Make sure you add the point. I'm going to add a bucket so that I can send the same value to two outlets. I'm going to pack them together you'll see why in a second and then I'm going to create a message which is dollar two dollar one five hundred so now I have a message that reads whatever my random value is whatever my random value is and then 500 which we now pass to the line message and the line message requires settings like this that are a uh, ramp from 50 to 150 over x milliseconds so in this case we're going to do ramp from whatever the current number is to our new number over f half a second and simply if I pass that in there and send a bang we don't need this second division here that's the problem it's trying to divide a crazy number by even smaller. There we go, I think that should fix it now. Yeah, we need it to be able to accept a float value, which the one I copied from Swatch didn't. So just be very careful when you're bringing it over, because the little things like that can drive you crazy. So now, every time we send a bang, it ramps to a beautiful new colour. And it spins in a new direction. So if you add music to the equation, Every time there's a peak, it's going to change direction and rave. Push escape. And you're already at the party. So that's just a little silly patch that we can make that introduces us to using grid shapes, applying textures and then animating them in fun ways using external values like our uh, music here.